Good evening. On behalf of the Brockton Area Branch National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, welcome to the State Senate debate between incumbent Michael Brady and challenger Moses Rodriguez. I am Phyllis Ellis, president of the Brockton Area Branch and also moderator for this evening's debate. The NAACP cannot endorse any candidate. We can, however, wish them good luck. If you are an undecided voter, perhaps after the debate tonight, you will become a decided voter. The format of tonight's debate is a one rebuttal format. The candidates will have a chance to rebut the other. Pat Monteith is the facilitator and also the timekeeper for this evening's debate. So gentlemen, please stay within the time. Unlike a live debate, we have a mute button and Pat's not afraid to use it. <laughs> Questions for tonight's debate were submitted by members of our organization and have not been seen by any either candidate. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Now let's introduce the candidates. Mr. Rodriguez, can you give us a brief intro of yourself in 60 seconds? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you, Phyllis, and thank you, the uh, area NAACP for hosting this event. I'm honored to be here as someone who was born overseas, coming to this country at age 16 and not speaking a lick of English. This is truly an honor and privilege to be with the voters and yourselves uh, today to discuss the issues that are affecting the people in the great city of Brock. Thank you. Wow, under 60 seconds, love it. <laughs> Mr. Brady, what about you? Thank you. And during this time, I also want to thank the Brockton NAACP for hosting this candidates forum. It's been an honor to serve as your state senator during the past several years. Over this time, I've gained much experience having served on the Brockton School Committee, the Brockton City Council, as your state representative prior to becoming a state senator. Hello. And you know my work ethic speaks for itself. As an elected official, I have helped to construct five elementary schools over this time with 90% reimbursement from the state, helped to get our library expanded to make it handicap accessible, and helped with many other endeavors. More recently, as your state senator, I have worked to secure funding for the, with the Student Opportunity Act, bringing over $1.4 billion to the state and over $30 million to our Senate district, including $20 million of additional funding for the city of Brockton. I have also worked to pass legislation to feed our young students with breakfast after the bell. I also helped to pass the Criminal Justice Reform Act and many others. And I want to thank again the NAACP over this time period. I've been a proud and honored member of the NAACP and I'm asking for your vote and the constituents listening to your vote in my upcoming re-election as your state senator. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Are you ready? All right, gird your loins. We're getting ready to get started. The first question is for Mr. Rodriguez. In a virtual conversation on YouTube on July 28th, you spoke about serious disappointment in our leadership in handling the coronavirus crisis. That disappointment pointed to the leadership of Senator Brady. You said during this crisis, few were advocates on the state level for Brockton. What did leadership do right in managing this crisis and what did they get wrong? You have 90 seconds. Unmute. Oh. Unmute. Okay. I'm unmuted. Uh, I'm glad you asked this question. And first and foremost, I want to say uh, my deep condolences for the 277 people that have passed on because of the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation here in the city of Brockton. What did the administration do right? In my opinion, they shut down the state when they were supposed to shut it down. And what they did wrong is the fact that in this community, we were one of the hardest hit community in Massachusetts and the state chose to not respond to, this, to, the, uh, to the problems that the folks in this city were facing until late into the pandemic era. Uh, as a matter of fact, we didn't open our first test site here in the city of Brockton until, until the beginning of May where it left some of us, I myself and my family were basically uh, survived Corona uh, 19 in terms of COVID-19 in terms of getting affected by it. And I had to get tested in a, in a parking lot in Weymouth. So when you look at one of the largest communities in Massachusetts, the most affected community in Massachusetts, the state was not here and the administration was not here to help the community out when they were supposed to. 
thank God Brockton Hospital and the Neighborhood Health Center was able to set up uh, the test site at Brockton High School, but it was no, uh, no thanks to the state. As always, they forgot about us. Thank you. Mr. Brady, 60 seconds to rebut that. Yes, thank you. I, with all due respect to my counselor, uh, we, we unfortunately were not uh, provided any help from Washington, D.C. with the president, and I hope we get a new president. As a state, we work constantly to get funding and equipment testing in the hospitals. I'm on a board that meets weekly with the Commissioner of Public Health. So we did have testing sites at the Signature Health Facility and the Neighborhood Health Center. Of course, it was not enough and we needed more testing, but we continued to fight Washington to get more funding and testing sites. And eventually the Brockton High School was open. And my brother passed away in, on May 4th and he was diagnosed with coronavirus. So I'm well aware of what was going on. He didn't get diagnosed with it till the end at the, unfortunately, the hospital, uh, the old Cushing Hospital. Uh, but he had circulation issues, which that was a cause of his death. But he was also diagnosed with coronavirus. So I'm well aware. I worked with the hospitals. I visited the hospitals too. Matter of fact, with our deputy fire chief, I visited the hospitals at Brockton Signature Healthcare, the Neighborhood Health Center, and the Good Samaritan Hospital to see what their needs are. And I feel we were, our state delegation was right on top of it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, 60 seconds to close out the question. Well, again, it, it goes to show you how out of touch uh, Mr. Brady has been in terms of dealing with all these issues. When I just stated that we were one of the hardest hit community in Massachusetts, and we were one of the last major cities to set up a test site. I, I my entire family, including my grandson, was affected by COVID-19. And we had to go to Weymouth to get tested for COVID-19 and not Brockton as we should be. Okay. And, and we cannot rely on the feds to bail the state out. I mean, the state is designed to basically do what, what it can on its own. The first time uh, we actually saw the, uh, the National Guard in Brockton was doing the, the demonstrations. You know, the National Guard was around and all these other communities helping them out with COVID, but not in Brockton. The only time we saw them is during the protests. Okay, thank you. That's question number one. Question number two is for Mr. Brady. Since Brockton isn't the home of major company headquarters, our economic growth largely depended upon and still depends upon the robust health of our small business markets. During this virus crisis, our small businesses have taken a severe hit. What legislative and financial steps have you been involved in to try to help our small businesses during these dire times? Well, again, we worked with the administration to get things passed to help and to get funding passed for to help the small businesses. We worked with the Mass Works and the Neighbor Works. The, there was a problem though that there wasn't enough funding and we did finally get funding working with our delegation into the community. We also work with the county commissioners who received $93 million to help reimburse some of these communities. And they have reimbursed many communities in my district. Uh, I did hear today that they are coming to Brockton with a big check to donate to the city of Brockton to reimburse. But we work with some of the agencies as well. It was not enough though, and I, I totally hear that because 90% of my calls I got from constituents for unemployment issues, we addressed most of those. But I know some businesses that did apply for reimbursements and there was a lack of funding and there was not enough. Okay, Mr. Rodriguez? Well, fortunately, I have actually done some work uh, in terms of helping businesses in Brockton because as a city councilor and also as someone that works for the Cape Verdean Association, I've spent the last four months uh, since we reopened uh, helping businesses and individuals, uh, individual businesses applying for the PPP program and also for the Small Business Administration grants. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the businesses in this area, all you hear them doing is complaining about the fact that, again, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was not there for the local businesses. And when you look at it, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts continues to do it's best to forget that Brockton exists. I've coined the term that the city of Brockton uh, uh, lies within 
the Massachusetts purgatory because we are forgotten when it comes to uh, these, uh, these support that comes down the pipeline. Yes, the Plymouth County House, uh, the Plymouth County uh, uh, commissioners will be giving some funds that were through the CARES Act, but it's not donations that they're doing. These are funds that we are expending and they're reimbursing the city for funds that we're using. Thank you. Mr. Brady, you want to close it out? Yeah, be before even the county commissioner got the funding, the state, we were working with the state administration through federal dollars that did reimburse and get funding to help out small businesses, residents for a wide range of issues. And I work with local elected officials. I work with uh, mayor's office. We have meetings once a week with our mayor's office. It's been cut to every two weeks now. I work with every elected official in the communities that I represent. No disrespect to the councilor, but he has never reached out to my office for any help. And we worked with several other city councils, not only in Brockton, to find out what their needs were, but elected officials, both at the state house and the town select men and women of my district. So I work with them constantly. I've never heard from my counselor on any issues that he felt needed to be addressed. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Brockton is a fairly large city, less expensive than most its size, demographically attractive with hard working people. Why can't our leaders bring some major companies and headquarters to our city? Well, that, that question should actually go to our state senator first. <laughs> he claims that uh, he does all this wonderful stuff and he works all uh, you know, these magical things and bringing millions of dollars into this community. But what, what Mike forgets is that I'm a, I'm a city councilor and I've been a city councilor now for the last seven years. And every time uh, funds come in, it has to go through the council first. So I don't recall any of these, uh, these mega companies coming down the pipeline from that end uh, coming into Brockton. When I was mayor, I spent a, a great deal of times uh, talking to uh, companies, um, talking to agencies that would, would you know, that to look into ways of helping us uh, advance the lives of Brocktonians. But in terms of uh, what I'm looking for, from a state legislator, from a state senator, is funding to come down to Brockton generated by the senator, not necessarily voting on things that others are doing or passing uh, and saying yes to laws that our others are basically promoting, but basically to do it himself versus just going along with everybody else. Thank you. Mr. Brady? Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to work together with your colleagues to get things done. I brought millions of dollars of grants to Brockton and with Mass Works, working with Mass Housing and the Neighborhood Housing Partnerships. And there hasn't been a crane in Brockton for over 50 years. Two of the constructed buildings, the Mayor Carpenter Garage was helped with state funding in the building on the corner of High Street, which is now Frederick Douglass Avenue, Main Street. That was helped with state funding. I work with those agencies and that's just Brockton. Prior to that, we got tax incentives for WB Mason when I was on the city council to get funding for that. And I've also helped to get other businesses. There's a major business in Plimpton that employs thousands and thousands of people because I don't just represent Brockton, I represent several other towns. We've also helped to get constructed businesses in the town of Northeastern, which is part of my district. So I've worked with state agencies to get the funding to this district. All right, Mr. Rodriguez, close it out. I don't know where the Senator has been, but I've seen cranes in this city uh, within the last 50 years. I mean, the courthouse was built before 50 years ago. Uh, there was other buildings that popped up all over the city in, within the last 50, you know, 50 years. So I don't know what he's, is he saying that the previous uh, senators didn't do anything in this community uh, going back 50 years ago? But also, I also wanna just to touch bases with the, uh, with the garage that everybody talks about how great the state was for giving us $10 million to build the garage, but everybody forgot that the taxpayers of Brockton also put in $7 million to build that garage. So where's the thank you to the citizens and the taxpayers of Brockton for dishing out $7 million to build that garage? Thank you. The next question is to Mr. Brady. There have been growing concerns about the continuous rise of property taxes on the homes of regular voters and their families. You sponsored a major bill, property tax abatement in 2016. 
that help seniors, active veterans, and the disabled with better options for paying their property taxes. However, do you have a plan to deal with the continuous tax increases on the properties of regular families who see no relief in sight? Well, that's left up to the local city councils how they set the tax rate. We get the funding from the state. For instance, the Student Opportunity Act, we get more funding for schools ever before. Chapter 90 money is for road construction work. We've continuous to increase funding for that. Local aid through lottery funding, which is direct aid. We've got funding for that. But the tax rate itself is set by the city council. They make the decisions and they have a measuring stick. They can put the tax burden on the businesses or the residents in with prop two and a half, they are only allowed to raise the taxes two and a half percent. Now they can also go for a tax override, but that's up to the city council to decide. Okay, Mr. Rodriguez. Phyllis, I have voted against tax increase in this city ever since I became a city councilor in this community because we, I feel that we cannot just tax our way into things. Uh, I believe that we have a state that does very well financially because other communities are do doing very well. We continue to rely on state funding for schools and the little chump change that we get out of chapter 90 funds. But we, the, the issue that I have is the fact that there's gotta be other funding coming down the pipeline from the state to help this community out because we cannot rely solely on the tax bases in this community. We don't have the business taxes as, as other communities do have. So the guess who, guess who ends up carrying the bag? It's the taxpayers of this community. So we cannot continue to do that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this to make sure that we get the proper funding that this community needs from the state. You wanna close it out, Mr. Brady? Yes, thank you. Well, that's why I supported the Fair Share Amendment. It taxes people who are making above and beyond a million dollars a year, and it doesn't hit their first million dollars. And that's been supported and that took a long time and it's still in the process of being passed. So it, pa it affects the wealthier people out there, not our citizens of Brockton as greatly as the people in Weston and Wellesley, et cetera. I also have supported some sports legislation on fantasy sports and all of those things that my constituents have asked for. We lose people to go to Rhode Island. It's a 30 minute ride from Brockton. We should get that passed. And I've met with my constituents several times and I filed amendments and I've also talked with the chairman of economic development. We are gonna be taking that up this fall. And I met with the Ways and Means Chair on this as well, because I serve in the Ways and Means Chair and he has supported my campaign because we have a great relationship working together and we've delivered more funding to Brockton than ever before. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, ma'am. Like the virus crisis, the opioid epidemic in our city is acute and affects mainstream as well as marginal society. As a longtime city council member, do you feel that the state and our state representatives have done a good job with Brockton in terms of providing sufficient funding and aid to our city to effectively combat this issue? The answer is no. Besides the little crumbs that we get for the champion plan, and uh, I noticed that Mike has been going around telling folks that he brought in $50,000 to the champion fund. What has the, the Commonwealth done to assist the region in dealing with a drug epidemic affecting so many of our citizens? As a mayor, I brought together the town managers from the town that surround Brockton to help the city in this effort. Um, although this is an issue that affects Brockton, like homelessness, Brockton, it, this isn't just the Brockton problem. It's a, more of a regional issue. When you look at it regionally, the state has not done what it needs to do to basically help us deal with this issue. We cannot do it by ourselves. We don't have the resources. We don't have the ability to do that. The deep pockets in, at, at Beacon Hill hasn't really done a, a thing to help us out. When you sit down and think about it, we continue to get hurt by the lack of funding that comes down the pipeline to help us deal with this effort. Mr. Brady, 60 seconds. Thank you. Yes, we did bring 50,000, but that wasn't the only thing. I've worked constantly with Gosnell High Point and many other agencies to help get people off the streets and help them get into addiction programs. Also, we passed legislation. That was part of the criminal justice reform bill to get people out of jails if they're not getting help because of addiction, get them into programs. And I constantly work with many of our 
people in the community, not just Brockton, that work at these agencies to get them into the programs and the legislation helps them get them out of the jails into the program. And we have funded that more and more every year. Of course it isn't enough. And we've worked with our federal delegation too because OxyContin has been found in these, Purdue and these other companies had lawsuits with our attorney general who I work with constantly in our federal delegation to go after funding from these health agencies who will abuse the laws that they got approved years ago to find and get people addicted to OxyContin. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, wanna close it out? Yes, I do. Again, a lot of meeting, a lot of discussion, but yet where are the resources? You look at the work that Senator Montigny, for instance, from New Bedford has done in terms of bringing funds into New Bedford. Uh, Mike talks about the $50,000 that he brought for the uh, champion fund, almost like he wants a medal for it. But you look at Montigny, he brought in $175,000 to, to, for the treatment of opioid disorders. $500,000 to organizations seeking to provide access to arts, cultural, and recreational programs for the kids. Another $80,000, and this is all on the newspaper that I got this from. This is not something that I'm making up. You know, another $100,000 for youth court, another $100,000 for law enforcement officers who are in need of mental health counseling for traumatic incidences. This is what I'm talking about. It's not just dealing with talking to this group, talking to that group, talking to the feds, talking to this group. These are concrete examples of funds coming into the community that could help us that are not coming into our community. Thank you. Next question, Senator Brady. Your resume shows that you have concerns for seniors, the disabled, and veterans, that you have sponsored or co-sponsored bills trying to help public schools, and just recently the Student Opportunity Act that secured major funding for public school education. However, screaming for help too is the youth of Brockton without generous avenues to sustain effective programs and space locations for our youth. The opportunities to discover, develop, and master skills and recreational play in order to keep our youth from general mischief and from the streets are very limited. Is there a plan for the city and state leaders to specifically address this problem with sufficient programs and space locations backed by monetary funds where our youth can congregate and develop their talents and skills? Thank you. Well, that's why I supported the Youth Opportunity Grants. I've supported Youth Build to help get the young people the jobs and the training to get into the workforce. I've also been a supporter of early childhood learning, full day kindergarten, and we got funding for that. I work with the Brockton Interfaith Community several years to get funding for that and after school programs to keep the kids off the streets to get them help. And I continue to support those initiatives. And the Safe Neighborhood Initiatives, and you mentioned the police too, we've increased funding for the Shannon Grant every single year not only when I was on the city council, but as a state legislature, I fought and got continued funding for the city of Brockton, much more than other communities, as my councilor mentioned. New Bedford, Mark Quintini is a good friend of mine and he's supporting me in this campaign. We work together with him. I work together with Mike Rodericks, who's the chairman of Ways and Means. Nobody does it alone, but I have put into the budget in the bill every year to increase Shannon Grant that helps with a lot of youth initiatives to help them get, get them off the streets and helps the police to work with our youth as well. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, 60 seconds. Well, it's funny that he brings up, that Mike brings up the Shannon Grant and I'm very familiar with the Shannon Grant both from, uh, from working in, in Mayor Harrington's office and also as the mayor here in the city. But the Shannon Grant is a grant that basically nowadays is just used for law enforcement to enforce the rules and the laws in the community. It's doing very little in terms of uh, interjecting um, any sort of uh, programming to help the youth out in our community. As I mentioned earlier, just by going through, and I'm not saying Montigny is a friend of mine or he's even supporting me, but the fact is when I see these other senators bringing resources into a community and all I hear from our senator is that he meets a lot, he supports a lot of things, but those things do not make it to Brockton. That's what I have an issue with. Thank you. Mr. Brady? Yes, I have to disagree with my uh, counselor. Shannon Grant can be used for many initiatives for the youth. It's left up to the local community 
And if my counsel doesn't advocate on that, I can't speak for him what he's advocating for or not. Again, I meet with elected officials all over my district. When they ask for things and help with things, we get it done. I've worked with our police department, our police chiefs across the district, the community police officers. I've gone to meetings, as he mentioned, you gotta meet with the residents. I've been at meetings at the Arnold School. I've been at meetings at other schools, listening to my constituents. If my counsel is not at these meetings, I can't speak for him. I don't know why he's not meeting with his constituents. I constantly meet with my constituents and my elected officials, and we deliver the bacon. If the bacon is not presented locally to where they need to go, that's up to the local officials to do. Thank you. Next question is to Mr. Rodriguez. There is poverty and crime in Brockton, as we all know. Do you have a plan to seriously tackle these two issues? You're muted. You're muted. You cut out before you asked the question. That's why I didn't hear what your the question was. There is poverty and crime in Brockton. Do you have a plan to seriously tackle these two issues? Well, you know, uh, when you look at po poverty and crime, they go hand in hand. And the reason why we have crime in cities, as someone of color, I believe I can relate for the, uh, to the opportunities that the, a minority majority city faces. Uh, when you look at the lack of funding to community-based organizations that are on the ground leading on these issues, young people who are involved in crime are involved in criminal activities out of desperation and loss of hope. You cannot, uh, the Senator was talking about the, uh, the uh, Shannon grant a few minutes ago, early back in 2007, that grant was around a million dollars. It went down around $300,000. So I don't know what he's talking about in terms of uh, uh, supporting and putting more money into the Shannon grant. So I haven't seen those funds. And as far as me, you know, meeting with individuals, I'm not into just showing up at meetings for the sake of showing up at meetings. So somebody could say, you were at a meeting. My whole thing would be, showing up at the meeting and bringing something of substance to the meeting and not just talk about the fact that, you know, Washington isn't helping us, we're, you know, we're, we're stuck between this and that. My entire thing is we need to do something ourselves to help our community out, not necessarily holding on for others to do things for us. Thanks. Mr. Brady? Yeah, sometimes though you have to listen and meet with your constituents because we work for the constituents. That's why I attend these meetings to listen to my constituents. I reach out to my constituents. And one of the things we passed to bring up the poverty level is bringing up the minimum wage to $15 an hour. It's not enough, but you have to work with the businesses so they're not getting hurt too. And we've increased training initiatives. And I've worked in the past. This just isn't something I did today or yesterday. I worked in Mass Lake Community College with a SITAP grant, helping women and, and people of color to get training and initiatives to get into the workforce in uh, I got a great story of a single mother who had a boyfriend that was holding her back through the training of this grant at Master Suite. She was able to get a good job with the construction industry, dumped her boyfriend by building up her self-esteem, was able to buy a home for a family, and she still comes back to, the, to me thanking me. And I recruited from our church to me, the Lincoln Congregational Church, Mount Moriah, uh, the Messiah Baptist Church. I've met with many of my constituents here, and Reverend Walker, who has left, he was a great friend and, and advocate for this. And I met with him many times on these things. Thank you. You want to close it out, Mr. Rodriguez? Yes, I'm, yes. I'm uh, uh, Mike brought that whole discussion up. But the fact is that when you look at DTA, they provide funding for job training programs. And last in last year's budget, DTA gave to Brockton $142,000. And you know what, you, what Fall River got for that same, from that same program? Over a million dollars. This is what I'm talking about in terms of us getting, you know, crumbs, you know, little funds that come down the pipeline that doesn't do much in terms of really helping people out of poverty, to help people in terms of education, to help them out. You know, we keep getting these little crumbs. And all I'm saying is that if these other communities are getting those funds, why can't Brockton get those types of funds at that level? Not necessarily that we're not getting the funds, but to get it at that level. Thank you. Next question is for Senator Brady. 
You voted for the major police reform bill that was passed by a legislature and part of the bill mandates a better way to distribute resources equitably and create more opportunities for vulnerable communities. What was important was to see finally the voices of people who had been mishandled heard through this bill in terms of their civil rights. Can you delineate for us just how this sweeping bill becomes beneficial to the city of Brockton? Yes, um, first of all, in the Senate version, and there was a House version that is different, so it's in the conference committee, we put in over $5 million of training for police officers. And we also put in legislation so that they have proper certification. And that's including people from the community. So not only police officers will be on some of these commissions, but members of the NAACP, members from the community, and there's training for these individuals. There are still some questions about how it's gonna be implemented and how it's gonna be funded because we have to get funds for this and like our own budgets, like you and I have to balance our books, the state has to balance their books. And some of the things that we're looking to get funding for, we're, we're gonna be funding that $5 million. But we have to communicate and keep everybody on the table with this. So there's a thing about qualified immunity we're trying to get straightened out with that. There is still indemnification. Everybody has to be accountable. I have to be held accountable police officers have to be accountable. There was a lot of things we worked on together with this, but we're waiting to see what the final version, but the funding that's in there, the training and the committees that are being formed through this police reform bill, I am very supportive of. Mr. Rodriguez? Well, you know, we need sweeping changes in our police department. Uh, and as someone of color, I mean, we just saw what happened in uh, Wisconsin on Sunday, again, with another police shooting of a black man. Uh, this is something that's going on way too often in this country, and we have to do something about it uh, across the board. I have said that one of the things that we need to do in Massachusetts is to create a program where someone who joins the police department in Brockton and then moves on to Springfield, that that person receives the same training in Springfield that he receives in Brockton. We cannot be training police, the police in Brockton one way and in Springfield a totally different way. When I served in the military, when I was in the Navy, I went to boot camp in Orlando. Uh, my friends that went to boot camp in San Diego, we got the same exact training. So why is it that the police cannot be trained the same way so that they follow the same procedures across the country and across the Commonwealth? And that's something that I would be pushing for as, uh, as well as some of the other reforms that actually need to be put. Mr. Brady, you want to close it out? Sure, that is exactly what's in the bill, unified training across the board. Uh, and that's what I support, and that's why I voted for it to move it forward to the House, and it came out of the House, it's in a conference committee. So we're waiting to see what the final version comes out of a conference committee. But uniform training across the board is part of the bill, because exactly what happens in Springfield is not what happens in Brockton. Brockton trains their officers very well, but again, there's different certification processes in different cities and towns. We are trying to make it uniform, and that's why I support it in the bill. Thanks. Next question is to Mr. Rodriguez. There has been a call in many communities not to allow affordable housing, moderate income housing for individuals that are working. The president of the United States has declared the Obama's policy preventing discrimination in suburbs is resented. In Brockton, we have many working class individuals that require safe and decent affordable housing. What financial legislation would you support to make this happen? I think we can take it beyond that. It's not just uh, affordable housing, but it's to basically provide individuals with rental vouchers. One of the issues that I'm facing, uh, and I noticed uh, Mike said, you know, that he meets with his constituents. I'm actually, if you look behind me, I'm still at the Cape Verdean Association, not at home, at the Cape Verdean Association because I was working with constituents. You know, so it's not just meeting with constituents, it's actually working with constituents to help them with a variety of things, including help with rental um, income during this pandemic uh, situation that we're facing. So there's a confusion that affordable housing uh, means free housing, and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Affordable housing means housing that one can afford to live and pay. That's what it means. So I don't know what this whole thing about people being anti-affordable housing 
when affordable housing does not mean free housing. It's not welfare housing. It's just housing that people can afford to live. And as a working poor that I happen to be, I am for providing housing that people can afford to pay and live in this country. Not all of us can live with relatives. Not all of us can live in a, in a, in a high-end uh, uh, community in the sense. Some of us who are, are, who are the working poor need to get some help in order to be able to afford um, the housing that they live in. And I, again, affordable housing is not free housing. Thank you. Mr. Brady? Yes, that's why I supported workforce development housing. My record shows that I've supported this many times. The building that we have constructed on the corner of Frederick Douglass Avenue, it's being constructed on Main Street, there's gonna be some floors for veterans and some for us for workforce development housing. And again, it's left up to the local cities and towns on zoning boards and everything else. And you know, at one point, my uh, opponent in this race was supporting a, a big development up on the west side on Pearl Street and then I heard the other night he voted against it. So, uh, you know, there's a big difference. Are you supporting workforce development housing or are you not? I mean, I've supported in Ward 2 when I was a city councilor. We turned the Walnut Turner Street over tremendously from where it was before. We put new housing, supported workforce development housing, first homeowners initiatives. We did women build and youth build to build these houses. And I continue to support that. Mr. Rodriguez, want to close it out? Oh, yes. I, um, I supported the project on Pearl Street until I found out because we live in a form of representative form of government. So I live on the, on the east side of Brockton. I don't live on the west side of Brockton. So when the neighbors of the project come to me as a representative of them and say, we don't want that in our neighborhood, I, who basically respects democracy and look at people who are my constituents, this is when we go back to speaking and talking to constituents. The constituents said, we don't want the project. I, as a representative of the people, said, although it's a great project, the people don't want the project. That's why I didn't support it. And I'll continue to do that because I'm a representative of the people and I listen to what constituents say, unlike some other people. Thank you. Next question is to Mr. Brady. As you know, we are in more, we are in more than a climate of racial reckoning. There have been several unjustifiable shootings of black Americans. But when you look at, at racial injustice, it covers violence, discriminatory employment practices, health, and so forth. Have you taken any actions to show your support for racial injustice? Yes, I have. That's one of the things we passed with the criminal justice reform bill last year. And I've, you know, as the council mentioned, I have been out in the districts, not only in Brockton, but many other towns in my district, in East Bridgewater, in Whitman, in Easton, for many Black Lives Matter events. And it's showing up, listen to the people. And I'm glad my council finally did wake up and listen to the residents up the West Side, because there was a lot of people that I heard from that are not happy with my counselor that he was pushing it. He said, it's not up to the city councils to do economic development, it's up to the residents. Well, I feel as elected official, it is our job to do economic development, but we gotta listen to the residents. I'm glad he finally did listen to the residents, but I've met with a lot of constituents all over my district on this issue. And that's another reason why we're pushing this police reform bill. We're waiting to see what comes out in the final version of that. But that's why we passed the criminal justice reform bill as well to help our constituents. And again, workforce development funding. We've helped to fund this in the state and we will continue to do so to get people back into the workforce. That's why we increase the minimum wage. And that's not the final answer, but it's a start moving in the right direction. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez? Well, um, as someone of color, I mean, the issue of uh, racial inequality in this country is something that I've lived uh, my entire life. My entire adult life in this country I've been fighting for equality. Um, some of us are not born from, um, from the, uh, a position where we have been given everything because of our skin color, uh, where we're allowed to get away with things because of our skin color. Uh, I, on the other hand, suffering from this whole thing, uh, I see the inequalities that exist in our country. I'll continue to be an advocate for uh, 
it's not just Black Lives Matter because I am a Black man and my, as a Black man, my life matters. And I wanna make sure that people remember that my Black life matters. And I want people to understand, uh, you got people who say that all lives matter, but there's no need to do that because all lives will matter when Black lives matter. So until Black lives matter, not all lives matter because some lives will matter. So it's important for us to understand that we need to understand the struggles that black people have gone through in this country. And sometimes you need to be black to understand what that means. Thank you. Mr. Brady, you wanna close it out? Well, my whole upbringing in a very diverse neighborhood, I've grown up with many people of many different ethnicities and I've worked with different people of ethnicities. And that's why I've listened to my constituents and pushed for legislation. As I mentioned, working at Master Moore Community College, visiting different churches in my community listening to the people and putting forth legislation, funding, and all of the above. And I will continue to do so. And my record speaks for itself. All due respect to my counselor, you know, all of a sudden this year he's running for state senator. He's mentioning all these things. I had never heard him talk about this before. And, you know, he talked about being equal. Well, during a mayor's race a couple of years ago, he brought up about a gay black man and, and he denied, he, he made fun of it the other day at a, at a, at a debate we had in Marshfield, yet constituents down in Ward 4 had told me he was passing around because he was running against Mayor Harrington like it was a joke. And I think that is terrible. And I think that is unjust. And I think like I made mistakes and I'm human, we all make mistakes. I've accounted for my mistakes. My opponent has not. Okay, thank you. This next question is gonna be the same question for um, you gentlemen. I'll start with you, um, Mr. Rodriguez. Can you try to define for us what a leader is in your estimation and experience? In my opinion, a leader is a leader that stands up for himself and not just to go along what with everybody else, what everybody else tells him. Someone who basically is proactive in terms of uh, uh, of the doings. I mean, the, the Mike has been standing here all day and saying, I supported this, I supported this. Not once he said, I initiated something. To me, a leader is someone that initiates and who is willing to step up when it matters to do something, not just to raise his hand and vote for something. I'm glad he basically brought up the fact that back in 2007, uh, he said that I was driving around the neighborhoods. Things must be pretty bad when you're actually bringing stuff from 2007 to the forefront, when in fact, you know for a fact that that's not what took place. But yet you're saying that I was driving around the neighborhoods passing pamphlets about a picture that I had absolutely nothing to do with that was actually taken by someone who was running against the mayor that I was supporting. The fact is, it must be some desperate times for you to go back and start digging into that stuff to bring that up. And let me tell you something, those that live in glass houses should not be casting stones, Senator. The same question to you, Mike. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Brady. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Can you define for us what a leader is in your estimation and experience? Yes, I think the most important thing, it's great to promote yourself, but a leader listens. And he listens to his constituents, he listens to his colleagues, and he works together. And, you know, none of us does it alone. You got to work together with your colleagues on things. And I am very humble. I don't like to promote myself. I like to listen to people and promote the people I work with, because we all work together to get things done. And I don't do anything by myself, though I have put through legislation and filed legislation, but you need to get other constituents and other colleagues to support that to get the bills passed. I've put forth legislation to have proper staffing levels in hospitals, in the emergency rooms, and in the intensive care units. That's why I've been endorsed by the Mass Nurses Union. I didn't just wake up yesterday and do this, and I've been working all my life on this. I've put forth supporting education funding for our schools. I've been supported by a lot of Mass Teachers Organizations, the Boston Teachers Organizations, and the American Federation Teachers. And that's just something I did yesterday. It's working together with these individuals. And again, working with the leadership in the Senate, I've been endorsed by my Senate President and my Ways and Means Chair. And many of my colleagues I get along great with. And it's not just endorsements, you have to get the support of the constituents. 
getting back to what Mr. Rodriguez says, I didn't mention anything about you driving around passing out flyers. I've heard from people to say what you did to make fun of an individual at different public hearings, passing out a flyer about a gay man kissing his husband. And you're right. I shouldn't, a, a person should not do things in glass houses. I've atoned to my sins and I atone to it every day. And I am not perfect either. None of us are other than the good Lord above us. And I totally feel that way, but I've atoned to my sins and I've addressed them and I continue to address them. Thank you. It is actually 8.46 and we are actually down to our closing question. You guys will have additional minute because we have time. Um, but a clo last closing question for you, Mr. Rodriguez. You have been on our city council since 2014 and served as mayor for a time after the death of Mayor Carpenter. What significant achievements, what significant achievements can you highlight that you did while serving on city council and as mayor that will sway Brockton voters to vote for you? You have four minutes. Well, you look at it, um, since the, uh, the passing of uh, Senator Tom Kennedy, our state district has been abandoned and neglected. Other districts have benefited greatly from the proactiveness of their senators, just like we used to. Uh, they have benefited from millions of dollars of allocations, benefiting children, seniors, low-income families, and our veterans. Sadly, our Senate district has stood, watched, and frankly, hearing the same old sad stories of waiting until next year. When will our wait until next year come for the city of Brockton and the seven towns of the second Plymouth district? Second Plymouth and Bristol district. With your help, hopefully on September 1st of this year. Folks, we cannot continue to accept it, the wait until next year mantra and see if things will miraculously change. And we can continue to elect the same individual with the hopes that they will change. And the answer is no, they will not change. Frankly, this is the perfect definition of insanity, doing the same exact thing, expect, expecting different results. In February, when I announced that I would be seeking this office, I stated that I was not running against the, pre the present occupier of the seat because that seat does not belong to him. It belongs to you, the voters uh, and residents of this district. The decision of who gets the seat at, is yours and yours alone. And it should not be earned, it should be earned and not inherited as it has been done in the past. My campaign has focused on reinvesting in the city and the towns of the second Bristol, uh, second Bristol Plymouth District. We will bring discretionary funds, appropriations to the cities and towns of our district, just like some of the other senators have done so. We will demand investment in education for our young people, not just to take credit for the education bills crafted by others. We will demand investment in infrastructure and demand that the state do for our region as it has done for other parts of the state. This is the reason I come to you today and ask you for your support and vote on September 1st. I ask you to join our movement for change in this district. I ask you to join us in the 21st century where people are judged by the content of their accomplishments and not by who they are aligned with and what and who their friends are in high places. I have the support of the mayor of the city of Brockton and many other elected officials throughout the Senate district. I didn't seek their endorsement because the only endorsement that I'm interested in is yours, the voters and residents of this district. Our district deserves better. And I promise you that working together, we will do better. To you, the citizens and the residents of this great district, please stay safe and may God continue to bless you every day. Thank you and a good night. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Ms. Senator Brady, for your closing statement, this is your thank question. You. And, and I wanna thank you, Phyllis, and the NAACP and all our listeners out there. And I wanna thank my opponent, Mr. Rodriguez. And I also wanna thank the listeners and 
I thank them for their continued support. Uh, okay. I've had tremendous support, not only from all the organizations that I mentioned, because there's many working organizations. The Brockton Labor Force has endorsed me. They're not just average workers. They're workers who put the life on the line working out there. Our firefighters have endorsed me, and I'm proud of that endorsement. The PFFM, professional firefighters, I am very proud of their endorsement. I'm proud of the endorsement. They know the work I've done, getting education funding, passing legislation. And I mentioned, I filed legislation, but we work with our colleagues to file legislation. You know, I work with my fellow state delegation, uh, State Representative Claire Cronin and State Representative Jerry Cassidy have also endorsed my campaign because we work together to get things done and we have got uh, continued funding. And I know that uh, my opponent mentions, well, New Bedford or this town's getting more. Brockton still receives plenty more dollars of school funding than the city of New Bedford does, by far. We did increase some funding for New Bedford this year, which is great to bring, bring them up to speed, but Brockton gets still plenty more funding. We also passed some safe building code legislation and we continue to work on that. And I wanna to continue to see that that funding gets implemented and those laws get passed. And I wanna thank the residents. I've been a workforce 24 seven out there, even to clean up an environment. I was out there when the fossil fuel power plant was being proposed in Brockton. No disrespect to my counselor. I don't know where he was at during that time and he lives not too far from there. I listened to my residents. And I fought against that power plant and I'm continuing to fight against that plant because every couple of years they go to the environmental board to try to sneak it in again. And I've spoken out against that with our local councilors and our state officials to make sure that that doesn't get built and harm our environment. I've also worked to get a, a brownfields site over the east side of Brockton, again, not too far from my fellow councilors district to turn into a Brightfields grant. That was all done with a lot of work. It didn't happen yesterday. And laws don't get passed in a, in a stone throw. It takes a lot of work. Sometimes we don't get the laws passed or the funding done the first year. So we continue to work on this. This Student Opportunity Act didn't get passed the first year. We had to advocate. And we brought our state elected officials into the city of Brockton. We brought them to the high school. We brought them to the Kennedy School. And I want to uh, send my regards to the principal who passed away from that school. He did a great job for the Kennedy School students. But we were there with our city councils, our mayor. Mayor Carpenter was there in the beginning and Mayor Sullivan came afterwards, which was great. I don't know where my councilor was there because every other council who felt this was important in school committees were at that meeting to advocate on these schools. And with all due respect, everybody who calls my office, we answer the calls. Number one cause I've gotten since this COVID epidemic has hit has been unemployment issues. And we've helped out thousands and thousands and thousands of residents to get the unemployment done. And that's federal things too, because we help work with our federal delegation. Congressman Lynch, Congressman Keating, and Congressman Kennedy all represent the three congressmen, represent the district that I serve in working with our US Senator Markey and Senator Warren to make sure that the unemployment is put forth for these constituents. And sometimes it's something as simple as they have the wrong number put in and they get kicked out of the system. And I want to thank my staff. I am very honored to have a great staff with Al DiGirolo was my chairperson of my staff, and then Donna and a bunch of others who work for me, and nobody does it alone. I am very fortunate that we work together and we've been able to get things done. And I'm very honored to work with my state delegation because we've worked together in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and from the Brockton District to get a lot of work done. So when my, um, my opponent mentions the state, he's criticizing all of us from the Brockton delegation. And we do a great job getting the dollars brought back to our districts in the legislation passed for our districts. So again, I wanna thank all of you for hosting this tonight. I wanna thank the constituents. I've had tremendous support out there and I wouldn't be running without the support I'm getting for people to ask me to stay in and continue to do the job I've always done and to run for re-election. And again, I'm grateful for your support. I ask for your support in this coming election on September 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Brady, you give me a chance to ask the, uh, your closest uh, question, but actually was relevant to what you said. So gentlemen, thank you very much. That is all for our questionings tonight. I hope the undecided voters have made up their minds on who to vote for on September 1st. And with voting in mind, I just wanna promote our event on Sunday, August the 30th. It's a voter drive-in, drive-by registration at Lombardo's. 
You're going to hear from people talking about voting. You'll get a chance to register to vote. And you'll also get a chance to see the movie Selma if you haven't seen it. So please join us on Sunday, 4 o'clock at Lombardo's. And gentlemen, again, thank you very much. And this is the end of our debate. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.